I decided to do a few videos back to the very very basics this would be for anybody that's starting from scratch and has never done any pouring so I have set up um, the stuff that I purchased from the dollar store and from Walmart and I'm going to kind of go through everything really quickly for the beginners and this was still about 50 bucks so it's not cheap to just get the basics but you might could scrimp on a few things and so I'm going to quickly go through everything and I did get Elmer's glue this time even though I do ne I never use Elmer's glue in my regular pours I got it today to try because everybody else uses it and I really just prefer Floetrol it's just safer to use because you it's proven to be a good quality product Elmer's glue is just glue and if you want to sell a painting down the road I'm just not so thrilled with having glue in my painting to sell so I would typically use Floetrol. I bought five bottles of glue at $1.50 a piece at the dollar store. So that is about uh, $7 or something like that. And you can get a quart of Floetrol at Lowe's or Home Depot for $7. So I'm just suggesting you try Floetrol instead of glue. I have no idea how this is going to pour today because I never use glue. But what I did is a one-to-one -one ratio of glue to paint, and I'm using all apple barrel colors today pretty much. So I'm going to go through the colors real quickly. Uh, Laguna, <laughs> Palm Leaf, Holly Branch, Wild Iris, Royal Violet, Admiral Blue, Bright Blue, Bright Magenta, Bright Red, and I try to get bright colors, can you tell? Yellow, Harvest Orange, and I got a big bottle of uh, white and a big bottle of black even though I just have a little bit of black mixed up. So everything is one to one ratio and then I had water so I have my little cup here of extra water and I've mixed everything up and added the water to get to the right consistency and the consistency you want is kinda like warm honey pouring off of your stick. So you see how it's a steady stream, it's not drippy like real watery and it doesn't stick to my stick like peanut butter or say really thick yogurt so it comes off in a steady stream that's that's what you want it to do I have one more color that I have not mixed just so you can see me mix it from scratch this is one of the, the deeper green so I've got about an ounce of paint these are three ounce bathroom cups so I'm adding pretty much an ounce of color and about an ounce of glue and then I add water after I have totally stirred up the color and the glue together that's when I add water and I did mix up my whole big eight ounce bottle of white I, I mixed it all up so I've got some in a cup and some in a 12 ounce squeeze bottle so I got the squeeze bottle at the dollar store. It's very flimsy. I have an Amazon link below my videos that has better quality bottles than these. They have this, these dollar store ones have this big wide opening. The other squeeze bottles I have on Amazon are, um, they have a finer point at the end of it and they have screw on lids. They're a sturdier plastic and they do not leak at all. So I prefer those, but I wanted to show you this totally for a beginner's pour just so you could have an example of how people start with, with the really basics. And um, I'm using puppy pad on the table, which I got a 14 pack of puppy pads for about four or five dollars. But you can use a dollar general uh, 
any dollar store plastic tablecloth, which you know is usually about a dollar. You can use that to pour on, and actually the paint will peel off of it pretty easily. So there is the consistency that I want. Creamy, but still running off my stick in a steady stream. That's the right consistency. I also mixed up some metallics, which are going to be in a separate video. Rose gold, antique copper, those are folk art. And then these came from Dollar General. They're crafter's closet, gold, and silver. The silver's nice. The gold looks pretty bland. But so does, so does the rose gold from Folk Art. It looks pretty bland, too. I'm not impressed with the metallics. But that will be a different pour, so I'm going to move those cups aside. And I'm going to use black probably with that and do something... And yeah, I got the stir sticks. Uh, these are like craft sticks. There's two, two of these packed together for about a, a buck at the dollar store. Yeah, I got the three ounce cups to mix all of my paints in. Uh, these are three ounce bathroom cups. Got them at Walmart. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use for sales. It's called OGX is the brand. Coconut Milk anti Rakage Serum. It is a hair product. It comes in the hair section at Walmart, some drugstores, maybe Target, and if, if it all else fails, you can order it online on Amazon in my link below. The key ingredient at the beginning of the ingredients list is dimethicone. That is what you want. Okay? So with OGX, this bottle will last you a year. It, it just goes a long way. You only want, I'm not going to push down totally, I'm just going to slightly press and do a drop in each cup. It's hard to squeeze it and get just a drop. You can also, you can also unscrew it. It smells wonderful. And you can drip a drop off the end of the, dri the dripper thingy, you know, the squeeze thingy. You can do a drop that way. I'm not. I'm actually not putting any in the black or white. It smells so good though. And then I'm going to just stir a few times, not many times, just a few. And every so often, I wipe my stick off. If Sometimes I'll share the sticks between the colors, but you want to share them in like colors that are you know, similar to the other color you're using. And if it's not close to the color, then wipe it off or get a clean stick to um, stir the next color. Because you don't want to dirty up your color with another color that does not work with it. Like, I can put the yellow into the green because that's going to go away, like, immediately. And, um, so I'm just making sure I stir the OGX in a few times. That's all. I am doing this from home because we are heading out of town today to go on a camping trip. And I don't have my paints and my setup from home here anymore since I have my studio. So this, I'm doing it on my kitchen table again. And um, I've got, I'm doing it with my cell phone. So I'm not sure how the quality will be. I'm not sure if I'll be in focus because I've got my phone kind of in a precarious spot right now. Ooh, that OGX smells good. Okay, so I'm going to remove my puppy pads. I, like I said, I had to buy glue. I bought um, a pack of dollar gloves. So they're probably, they're probably made larger, and they are, so they're loose on my hands. I like to have nice, tight gloves, but these are loose because they're just, they were just like a four pack of gloves that were at the dollar store. Oh, and I also got six canvas panels. 
So here is, uh, I got eight by tens. And I think these are 11 by 16 canvas panels, which typically, if you um, put too much paint on them, they will warp. But the thing about the warping is if they warp, once they're totally, totally dry, you can kind of bend them and manipulate them again to get them straight. You can place a book, you know, put maybe like a piece of parchment paper down over the painting and then a heavy book and let it sit for a while. And also if you just put it back in a frame that's the correct size, then you will, you'll be able to uh, straighten the board back out. Howdy, howdy. We're moving on to experiment number two with Elmer's glue and paint, apple barrel paints and water. And then OGX is my little magic potion I added to the colors to get cells. So I'm going to do another eight by 10 canvas panel. These came from Walmart and hopefully that's in the frame where you can see it. And I'm going to do a three ounce cup and I'm going to use primaries this time. So red, blue, and yellow are primaries. So I've got the bright red. I will start with a little bit of white and everything is mixed one to one apple barrel brand with one to one ratio of Elmer's glue all and then I've got white and black so I'm going to do a little white and I've got two blues, I've got a deeper blue and I have a lighter blue so I'm going to use both of them pour in a little yellow Pour in a little white again. These paints are pretty thick, so they're not like going down like a dirty pour would, where the paint dips down, where the paints sink into the other colors. So, just not sure how this one's going to pan out. Now that that one went in okay. And I'll top it off with a little lighter blue just for fun. So I will, on this one, I'll put the stick through it a couple of times just to give it some swishes to kind of get it mixed up. Instead of putting the canvas on top and flipping it over, I'm just going to throw it down. So these are Superman colors. And after I pour paint onto the canvas, I like to be patient and sit for a few minutes to allows the cells to grow, even though I'm using Elmer's glue. If I were using Floetrol, the cells would already be popping up with this OGX mixed into it. The OGX is one drop in each color, but because this is glue, it is not doing the typical response that I'm used to. So it's just a very different experience. And I do not have a heat torch or heat gun here at the house. We are camping this weekend and I'm doing this at home from my cell phone. So I'm just going to blow. That releases any little air bubbles that are on top. You can also drop your canvas a few times. That releases air bubbles just like it does when you're, you've got cake batter in a cake pan. It will kind of release those bubbles as well. So that's a good way. But see, if the longer it sits, the more the cells will grow. So I always tell people to be as patient as you can be and let the cells grow. So, I don't know if you can see that up close. So, I'll go ahead and start tilting. I 
I mixed the paints a little bit on the thick side, but it was kind of weird. I'm not used to using glue because I use typically Floetrol or Oetrol. And so the paints were just really, really thick, and I kept adding water. And um, it was just a really strange consistency to me. You can use your hand in the corner like a dam as well to kind of block the paint from creeping off the canvas too much. But the, the paint is very thick. Now this one turned out a little bit, bit better on the cell action than the first one I did. So that's a good thing. The whites only showed up in this one corner, which is interesting. I'll hold it this way so you can see as I tilt it. I'm just letting it go to this last corner. You can also take some of your drippings and put it on the corner and then it'll help that paint go over it a little quicker. Now I'm going to bring it back just a little bit this way. But I'm pretty much done with it. So here it is. And I am sure these will continue to grow. So that turned out pretty well. And uh, like I said, in the last video with canvas panels, they do warp a little bit when they dry. They do do that because they don't have any wooden frame, so you just have to let it dry thoroughly. Put a piece of parchment paper over it and a heavy book to help press it back down, but you have to make sure it is thoroughly dried and cured before you even do anything like that. Or once you put it in a frame, the frame will help hold the the canvas panel back into the shape it's supposed to be. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.